Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Rachel. I'm a biomedical science major and a pre-medical student. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you some overall tips for all of the sections of the MCAT exam. If you haven't checked out my previous videos in my MCAT prep playlist, I highly suggest you check them out before diving into this one. Let's get right to it. I'll be reading off these tips from a document that I compiled during my MCAT studies. I'll leave a link to the document in the description below, as well as timestamps if you want to jump to a specific section. So the first overall tip is to stay focused and concentrated. It's so important to make sure that you're going through these passages, reading for comprehension and not reading too fast. Comprehension is key. Don't get complacent and use every minute. Make sure to read with a purpose and read with speed as well as accuracy. It can be hard to balance the two, so make sure that you're doing ample practice passages to improve on both of these points. Flag questions or passages that will interrupt your momentum and push forward. Sometimes if you encounter a difficult passage or problem, the best thing to do is to flag it and come back so that you're not interrupting your test taking flow. If you come across a difficult passage or question, don't let the complexity or confusion of the question get you flustered because this panic will transfer downstream to other passages and questions. So just flag and go. With this being said, make sure that you're not abusing the flag function. Too much flagging will also produce a sense of panic and anxiety and create downstream burden. Make sure that you're using the flag function appropriately and when needed. This also goes for highlighting. Make sure that you're highlighting key things that you want to come back to, such as key terms, enzymes, or equations. Excessive highlighting will make it harder when you're coming back to the passage to find key information. It'll also take out of your time, so make sure that you're using the highlighting function appropriately. One of the points that I constantly emphasize on my channel is how the MCAT is passage-based. This also means that it's text evidence-based. This fact in itself is something that students can definitely use to their advantage when preparing for the MCAT and when taking the exam. Make sure that you're using the diagrams, graphics, charts, and graphs given. Some of the diagrams may act as distractors, but a lot of them can be used to further drive in some of these foundational concepts. So make sure that you're comfortable reading diagrams and graphs, referring to the right ones that are being asked in the question. Since the MCAT is passage-based, don't base your answers off of purely prior general knowledge. Don't see an answer choice and immediately pick it because it's a familiar buzzword. Make sure that you're not being too hasty and choosing the familiar choice too quickly. Remember, base your answer off of foundational concepts from the passage information. On the MCAT, relevant passage information is textual evidence that serves as proof to answer the questions. So make sure you're using this to your advantage. In some cases, it's best to go with your gut. If you're stuck on a question, try to imagine yourself when you first saw the question. What was your first instinctual choice? Listen to your gut. Something that I picked up from the implicit association test that may help when you're trying to decide between two choices is that the mind hesitates when asked what it wants. So if asked quickly, the fastest answer is this unconscious choice. Another key strategy you can use for the MCAT is to put yourself in the test maker's shoes. Step back, reset, and look at the question as if you're the test maker. Ask yourself, what key points are they trying to emphasize? What key concepts is this passage based off of? Look for questions that the test maker would see as distractors. And remember that questions are built from the ground up. In its simplest form, a lot of these questions are asking about important foundational concepts with some sort of novelty, nuance, or novel thinking applied to these basic concepts. If you can catch what kind of foundational concept or mathematical relationship that the test maker is referring to, then you can use this to your advantage. Remember that all AMC questions are evidence-based. One thing to note when reviewing official practice exams from the AMC is that most of the explanations to these questions refer back to some quoted information from the passage. Ultimately, by ensuring that answers are backed up by passage evidence, the AMC is trying to reduce any type of subjectivity that may come up, especially in sections like the car section. Remember, outside from foundational concepts and high dual information that you need to know, questions should not be answered using outside extrapolated knowledge or any assumptions that go beyond what the question is asking. Now for some additional miscellaneous tips. The first one is to not accidentally select an answer choice when using the strike through function. This happened to me a lot of the times during my practice exams where I would use the strike through function and accidentally select an incorrect answer when I originally had the correct answer. So make sure that you're paying attention to what you're selecting when using this strike through function so this doesn't happen to you on test day. MCAT is the most important exam that you will take as a pre-med, so make sure that you're using any extra time to go back and check your answers. Make sure you're using break times wisely and as a time to clear your mind from the previous section. You're breaks, make sure that you're not thinking about the previous section and any mistakes that you might have realized. This will carry on to your next section. Make sure that you're starting each section with a clear, concentrated, and focused mind. 
One super important thing to keep in mind when taking practice exams is the reason for taking practice exams. Make sure that you're finding out what works for you and what doesn't work for you during your practice exam. Just as it's important to review the questions you got correct and the questions you got incorrect, it's also important to review the strategies that you use during these practice exams to see what works, what you should keep, and what you should discard. One thing I did after taking the official AMC practice exams was write down things that I wish I would have done differently as well as things that worked during my practice exams. For example, I noticed that after reading through Carr's passages, I would pause for a couple seconds after each passage to reset my mind and clear focus for the next incoming passage. This was a strategy that I ultimately kept coming into test day. However, some strategies like excessive highlighting didn't benefit me, and after taking note of this from my first AMC practice exam, I made sure that I wasn't doing this on my second exams and any other subsequent exams. Based on what doesn't work, formulate what improvements you can make going into future practice tests so that you can optimize your performance on test day. Remember, your score won't change if you don't change what's not working. Your score will not change if you don't adapt and apply any improvements from previous tests to future tests. The whole reason that you're doing practice tests is to find out what works and what doesn't work and to use these improvements to better yourself for future practice tests so that you can ultimately come into test day with the strategy that's optimized and maximized for your success. The last thing in this video that I want to leave you guys off with is a nine step strategy that I developed based on things I noticed during my exams that you can use for when you're unsure about a question. Now I want to put a heavy disclaimer on not following these steps to the T when it's on test day. Ultimately, after going through many practice exams and practice questions, these steps should come instinctually. You should definitely take heed of these strategies. Make sure to use these strategies more as guidelines and not a specific formula that you should follow every time you encounter a question you're unsure of. 1. Make sure that you're reading the question carefully. 2. Examine the vocab, especially for the psych section. And make sure that you're also examining specifiers such as not, except, and least. 3. Use process of elimination. If you're between two answers, evaluate the accuracy of each statement. Put yourself in the test maker's shoes and eliminate distractors. Find the fundamental concepts hidden in novel information. Eliminate statements that are accurate but do not answer the question. Four, determine any fundamental concepts, equations, or relationships that are from the MCAT high yield information and curriculum. Five, search for text-based passage evidence. Remember, for the AMC, Every answer is backed by textual evidence and eliminate anything that contradicts passage evidence or is not supported by it. Six, use relevant diagrams such as graphics, charts, graphs, equations, or anything else that's given. Seven, for cars, relate the question to the main idea, which is often found in topic sentences. Make sure to eliminate answer choices that contradict things stated in the passage. Remember, the main idea is the driving point of the passage. A lot of the author's stylistic choices will revolve around conveying the main idea and the author's purpose. Eight, determine the scope of the question. Do you need any outside information? Make sure that you're eliminating any general distracting knowledge. For cars, the AMC often gravitates toward more moderate answer choices. So be mindful of extreme opinions if present. Nine, go with your gut. For process of elimination, I also developed an acronym called ARSCO. These are questions that you can ask yourself when going through answer choices. A-R-S-C-O. This stands for, is it accurate? Is it relevant? Is it supported? Is it contradictory? Is it out of scope, extraneous, or a distractor? Remember, once again, these strategies should eventually become implicit and automatic in your test taking. And with that, I send you guys off with more MCAT knowledge. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Let me know if you've tried out these strategies and if any of these strategies worked for you. Let me know your favorite strategies. Make sure to hit the notification bell to stay tuned for more upcoming MCAT videos. Best of luck in your studies, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!